Welcome back. Brand new video of a violent confrontation last night between protesters and law enforcement in New York City. Demonstrators, some reportedly with Black Lives Matter, shoving police officers as the scene turned chaotic. You can hear someone in the crowd yelling disgrace at the officers. But despite images like this and many others we've seen, one New York Times columnist is suggesting the protest violence that plagued our cities this past year was a big myth. Paul Krugman tweeting, yes, there were bad actors. There are always bad actors in any situation, but not many. The idea that our big cities were under threat is pure malevolent fantasy. BLM may have been the best behaved protest movement in history. Tommy, I'd like to start with you on this. You know, the protests and riots following the George Floyd killing just in Minneapolis alone resulted in a $350 million worth of property damage, nearly $2 billion nationwide, 18 deaths, 400 law enforcement officers injured. We know that Federal Protective Services Officer Patrick Underwood was killed in Oakland. St. Louis Captain retired. Police Chief uh, David Dorn was also killed. I mean, th this is not nonviolent. What do you make of this kind of color that he's placing on this? Unfortunately, those in the fake news media think the American people are stupid and they think that their smoke and mirror charade is working and making us believe that uh, the BLM movement is mostly peaceful. But then again, we did have a CNN reporter that stood in front of a burning building and said that the protests were mostly peaceful. So uh, they, they want us to, I guess, not believe our own eyes. We're seeing what's happening here. But the thing about the BLM movement is this, that everything that they've been doing for the last several months, if not several years, has been working. They've been given a pass to lawlessness. They have our own vice president uh, tweeting out contributions for the bail effort to get some of these individuals out of jail and to pay for their, their process. So they've been given this giant pass and they're going to run with it. You know, this organization, as violent and destructive and disgusting as it may be, they are smart people that are running it. Obviously, we know that they are enriching their sel themselves, but just beyond that, they know that they've got our Democratic leaders. They know that they've got the media. They know that they've got a lot of companies, social media and pop culture on their side. So they're running an intimidation campaign. If you don't fall in line with BLM, if you don't co-sign and endorse everything that BLM does, you are deemed a racist and you will be canceled. So they're going to continue on this charade, and that's why they've been so emboldened. That's why you're seeing them getting more and more violent. You're seeing them taking to the streets more often after every single incident because they're smart. They've seen it work. They've been able to get away with it. So why would they stop? They're only going to stop if we've got leadership that says this is unacceptable and puts an end to it. Kaylee, part of the impact of this narrative being pushed of the non, you know, no destruction and, and no violence quality of this movement of these protests throughout the last year is that it gaslights all of those citizens who had their livelihoods destroyed, who lost their loved ones, who had their loved ones injured during the process. And who is listening to those Americans? Who is actually paying attention and trying to restore their livelihoods and their fractured families? You're right. It, tot it totally ignores their pain, their suffering. Uh, that's exactly it. And it's so insulting if you've had your business burned down, if you tragically lost a family member in these riots, to turn on MSNBC and see a reporter standing there with a microphone saying, what we're seeing here is generally not unruly as a building is in flames behind him. Uh, it's just simply defies logic. And it's amazing to me, to give you another example, the AP's White House correspondent said last month, and Fox uh, reported on this, said last month on television, these protests were not violent, they were nonviolent protests. Now, he knows that's not true. He sat in my White House press briefings when I played the footage that you're watching right now on your screen, similar footage, but he went on TV and said the opposite. But the facts tell the story when you have 14,000 arrests at the nonviolent protest, 14,000 across the country, 12 cops shot, and a White House correspondent has the audacity to go on TV and say, no violence here. It's a lie, and it's unfortunate, and it marginalizes, marginalizes the pain of the victims, as you just noted. And Steve, I wanted to ask you about something specific in here as well. Isn't the notion of behaving, isn't that exactly the type of colonist language and patronizing approach that true social justice activists see as so problematic? Isn't this just one more progressive liberal getting it all wrong? Yes, exactly. And it's hilarious, by the way, to see that this is a guy who's 
um, been awarded the Nobel Prize. It's just every time he comes out with something as, as fatuous as this, it is just inconceivable to me that he's even taken seriously. He's obviously a total joke. He's humiliated himself with this. I mean, it's so provably false. I mean, just in its own terms, he's talking about the best behaved um, protest movement in history. I don't recall, just to take one recent example, the Tea Party movement, incredibly powerful nationwide movement. I don't recall them going around the country looting and burning things and getting arrested. It's just unbelievable. But I tell you what it really tells you is it's just another example of how of the of the left's just complete hypocrisy and gaslighting. Whatever they say you are guilty of, they themselves do. So for example, they've been completely on their high horse about how certain people um, Trump supporters and those who are in the media on, on that side of the argument have been trying to um, get, pretend that the January the 6th events at the Capitol, the riot at the Capitol, never really happened, airbrush it out of history. They're completely enraged when people try and put that into context. And now we see them doing exactly the same thing, but much, much worse in relation to these riots that were provably dangerous and damaging. And are still going on.